to God. What a mighty God we serve. We serve an awesome God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to this live broadcast. Amen. I'm looking forward to sharing the word of God with you. Appreciate you guys greatly taking the time out to be a part and listen. Amen. I believe there's a word from the Lord for you on tonight. We serve an awesome God. Glory to God. You are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Listen, do me a favor. If you're on an Android device, slide up and share this broadcast with your followers. Share it on Twitter all the way from Orlando. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Welcome to this live broadcast. Amen. If you want, all right, praise God. Listen, if you are on an iPhone, swipe from the right to left. I invite your followers to jump in on this broadcast with us. We love everyone getting the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Are you excited about God on tonight? Are you excited about the word of the Lord? We serve an awesome God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Thaddeus. Thank you. Share it. Tweet about it. Invite your friends. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for inviting your friends. We serve a mighty God. I said we serve a mighty God. God's on your side. God is for you. Amen. And I just felt this floating around in my heart early this morning. No, from late last night, really. That God's people, you, that's you, you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. Things are about to change. Things are about to take a turn for the better. 2016 is going to be better than 2015. My God, my God, my God. Do you believe God with me? Do you believe God with me? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mighty God. I said, you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. My God. What you need to get the victory is right at your fingertips. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for inviting followers. Listen, do me a quick favor. Can you just type the amen, touch it in a grin? Me too. Can you just type the name of the cities where you're from? This may be some of you, some of your first time to be joining us on this live broadcast. I want to say welcome to all of you. Welcome. We are family. We all are hungry. Florida, praise God. Frisco, Texas in the house. <laughs> Praise God. Quavanda all the way in the soda. Birmingham is in the house tonight. Praise God. My cousin Chris down there in the Bahamas is in the house. New Mexico is in the house. Praise God. Praise God. All right, I own a windbreaker. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. Awesome God. I'm excited about sharing the word of God with you on tonight. I really am. Praise God. Listen, let's go into prayer. And we are going to jump right into the word of God. Amen. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you for every single person that's a part of this live broadcast. God, we pray that the Holy Spirit would take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Make it alive to your people. Speak to your people. All right, Dubai, Baltimore, praise God. Welcome. Welcome to the broadcast. Speak to your people. Minister to them. Strengthen them. Let the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of revelation, God, let the spirit of power and might descend upon your people tonight. Every person on this broadcast tonight that's believing you for a miracle, that's believing you, God, for a breakthrough, that's believing you, God, for a supernatural turnaround. God bless them beyond measure. Give it to them before this broadcast come to a close. Give it to them, God. Give it to them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And we vow to give you the glory and the honor. God, and right now, we take authority over the enemy. We bind the devil in advance. Satan, the Lord rebukes you. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Every principality, every power, every rule of the darkness of this world, every spiritual, I feel the Holy Ghost beginning to move, every spiritual wickedness in high places. We rebuke you 
in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, Satan the Lord rebukes you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Listen, I just want to say this. Just right, right on the offset. Listen here. I was with my pastor in the service this morning. My pastor preached the word of God. Listen, we had just an awesome time of fellowshipping. He's my mentor. He's my pastor. He's the one that ordained me into the ministry in 1997. It was, it, it was just an awesome meeting. Amen. And listen, uh, my friend by the name of Dexter had a very powerful testimony. I could not wait to get on this broadcast to share the testimony that God gave to our friend Dexter. Listen, he was facing a situation earlier this year, and we all were praying and believing God. The Holy Ghost told me to tell him, take a white piece of paper and take B and write it in big red bold letters, approved, and listen, his situation, he had to go to court, deal with legal situation and everything. But listen here, friend, God turned his situation around. That's what I'm talking about. But Dexter had another testimony. I got to call his name. He's my friend. He had another testimony. Listen, he got a letter. I, I, I can't go into all the details, but he owed $96,000. Are you listening to me, friends? He owed $96,000. And guess what? Guess what, friends? God supernaturally wiped his debt clean. Man, you ought to shout. Listen here. I said you ought to, you ought to just shout and give our God praise. We serve a mighty God. We serve a debt canceling God. We serve a God of the breakthrough. We serve a God of signs, wonders, and miracles. My God, I share a testimony with you to let you know that you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. My God, if it happened for my friend, I believe you on this broadcast tonight, you are next in line for a miracle because my Bible says God is no respect to a person. If he did it for one, he'll do it for all. Somebody on this broadcast tonight, just help me lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody help me praise him. Somebody help me magnify him. Somebody help me bless the name of Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It look at someone and say, it's a strong tower. The righteous Glory to God, that's you and that's me. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they run therein and they are safe. They are saved. They are delivered. Their situations are turned around supernaturally because it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Somebody, just help me praise him. Glory to God. I said you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. I said you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. What a mighty God we serve. Can you feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you feel the power of God beginning to move already on your behalf? Can you sense the presence of God? He is not dead. He is alive. He raised from the dead on the third day. And he said, all power, all, all, not some, all power on heaven and on earth has been given unto me. We serve the almighty, omnipotent, all-powerful Lamb of God. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I'm not ashamed to say I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed to be associated with Jesus because the Apostle Paul said in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation. When the gospel is preached, miracles happen. When the gospel is preached, signs and wonders follow. My God, when the gospel is preached, people receive financial breakthroughs and supernatural turnaround. That doesn't make sense to the natural man. My God, somebody help me. Just bless his holy name because he is worthy. I said he is worthy. Praise God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost here. Mighty God we serve. Mighty God. 
I'm not ashamed. I'm saved all the way down in my toenails. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I'm washing the blood. I was on my way to a Christless hell. But January the 3rd, 2.30 in the morning, Jesus visited my life. The power of God, the presence of God. I fell on my knees and I said, Jesus, I belong to you from this day until the day I die. My God, I was hanging with the wrong crowd, involved with gangsters. Ah, but when Jesus reached out his nail scarred hands and touched your life, you can't be the same. My God, he delivered me. He set me free. He washed me in his blood. He turned my life around. And ever since that day, I've been serving God and I'm going to serve him until the day I die. I ain't turning back. I'm going all the way. I said, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way with Jesus. I'm going all the way. I ain't going to compromise. I ain't going to lower the standard. I'm serving Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I belong to him. Somebody shout yes here. Glory to God. All the way. Now watch this. This brings us right to the word here I want to share with you. It's coming from 1 Samuel chapter 14. And this is where we got our message from. Amen. You are closer. You are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. You know, sometimes as Christians, we make a mistake to begin to look out to other people thinking the breakthrough going to come through them. Listen here, friends. Jesus got your breakthrough in his hands. He is about to come through on your behalf. He is about to work it out on your behalf. He sees the stress you're dealing with. He sees the burden that you've been carrying. He is about to work things out for you. You don't need a whole crowd with you. All you need is God on your side. Are you listening to me? I said all you need is God. The Bible says wherever two or three, wherever two or three of us touch and agree, in the name of Jesus, he said, I'm going to be in the midst of them. So you know what, friends? He's right here with us right this very moment. The presence of God is here. The Lord is here with us. Praise God. Now watch this. First Samuel chapter 14. Listen to what it says. Welcome, friends. Welcome, welcome. Watch this. Verse 6 of First Samuel 14 says, And Jonathan said, to the young man that bare his armor. He said to his armor bearer, Come, let us go over under the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be, man, I love a man who, who ain't got to have a crowd with him. Listen to here. He said, Come and let us go over under these circumcised. It may be under these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us sometimes. You're just not sure about certain situations. It's okay to admit that. So Jonathan said, it may be, it may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint. My God, I love it. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many Oh, with just a few. God can use a crowd if he want to. He can use one or two people if he want to. You got to understand this situation here. The Israelites didn't have much weapons. The people of God, they did not have much weapons to fight with. And they were surrounded by people. Their enemies were armed and dangerous with swords, shields, and spears. Jonathan had a sword, King Saul had a sword, but the rest of their army was lacking the weapons that they needed to defeat their enemies. And Jonathan, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, you know what? I ain't sitting here for another second. Then that's where we get, that's where we get defeated sometimes. We, we are waiting on a breakthrough. Listen, sometimes the breakthrough ain't going to happen until you take a leap of faith, until you take a step of faith. If the woman with the issue of blood would have sat in her house and whined and mumbled and just sat there saying, I'm waiting on God, her situation would have never changed. She would have still been there until the day she died. But when she heard about Jesus, she said, man, I ain't sitting here another second. I got to get out this 
this house. I got to get out this dead environment that I'm in. I got to get from around the negative, doubtful situation that I'm in. I got to get around some people that's got life. I got to get where the power of God is moving, friend. And she got out to the crusade where Jesus was having a big meeting and the Bible says she pressed through the crowd and when she touched the hem of his garments she was made whole but had she stayed home that day she would have not got the miracle. I'm preaching to someone you are saying you're waiting on God but sometimes God's waiting on us to take a step of faith to make something happen. Are you listening to me? Goliath threatened the armies of Israel for 40 days and 40 nights but my God, David showed up to bring his brother's lunch and when David heard the threats David said the devil is a liar is there not a cause are we not serving the God the king of kings and the lord of lords David said listen I'll take Goliath on I kill the I kill the bear and I kill the lion and the same God that delivered me from the lion and the bear he is going to deliver me from this uncircumcised giant called Goliath because there is a God in Israel. Are you listening to me on tonight? You can't sit there forever and keep waiting. Man, if you keep waiting, you're going to rot. You got to do something. Are you listening to me? When Jesus, when Jesus preached in the temple where the man with the withered hand, Jesus said, stretch forth your hands. Sometimes you got to do something to the blind man. He said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Let someone take you and wash. And he went and when they washed his eyes, his sight returned. He went from being blind to having 20-20 vision. Sometimes you got to do something. Are you listening to me? God told Joshua, the men that were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, when they were about to cross over the Jordan River, God said, Joshua, you tell the high priest, as soon as, tell the Levites, as soon as the soles of their feet touch the Jordan River, I'm going to dry it up. Sometimes you got to get your feet wet to see the miracle. Sometimes you just got to step out on raw faith and trust that God is with you and do something and watch God do what you couldn't do before. Are you listening to me? But some people just want to sit around and say, I'm waiting on God. Friends, a lot of the miracles that God gave to me and my wife, it didn't happen because we stayed and sat in our house and wine. It happened because we took steps of faith to make the thing happen. And God met us halfway. Are you listening to me, friends? So that was the situation that Jonathan found himself in. King Saul's army was shaken up by the enemy. They were under a tree. They weren't making a move. They were afraid of the enemy. They had come to a place where they had forgotten the promises of God. God had already gave them a promise and said, one of you shall chase a thousand and two of you can put 10,000 to flight. I believe Jonathan remembered that promise and Jonathan said to his armor bearer, he snuck away even without his dad knowing sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to get a break breakthrough. Who am I preaching to tonight? Sometimes you just can't tell everybody the plans that God has in your heart and in your spirit. Sometimes you got to let a very limited amount of people know what God said to you and just take the step of faith and watch God. Mary said, whatever he say unto you, you got to do it, man. If you want Jesus turn the water into wine, you got to fill the water pots. If you want to see the water turn into wine, then you got to pour it out. If you you want to see Lazarus raised from the dead? Jesus said, guess what? I ain't going to do everything for you. You got to take away the stone. And sometimes before we get a miracle from God, there are some things that we got to do. God said, Moses, I'll open the Red Sea, but there is something in your hands that you can use. You got a rod in your hands. Stretch it out. When you do what you can do, I'll do what you can't do. Who is it that I'm preaching to? I'm talking to somebody tonight. You need a miracle from God. Your back is against the wall. My God, the help of man have already failed you, but you got to do something. I say you got to do something to get a breakthrough. I don't know what you got to do, but you got to do something. I feel the anointing of God. Now watch this. So the Bible says, the Bible says, man, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come, let's go and take the enemy on. I know I'm the only one with a sword. I know you ain't got a sword, armor bearer. But just trust me, man, because there's power. 
power. I feel the Holy Ghost. There's power in agreement. You ain't need everybody on your side. All you need is one person that believes God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the Bible says one of you can resist, but two of you will overcome. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. You got to hook up with somebody that believes God. You don't need everybody. You just need the right person that believes in your dream. My God, and God will give the victory. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You right on the verge of a breakthrough. You right on the verge of a miracle. You are closer. I said you are closer than what you realize to a breakthrough. You are closer, my God. Don't throw the towel in now. Don't give up now, my God. Somebody ought to lift your hands to, say, to heaven and say, God, I'm next in line for a miracle. I believe you, God. I stand on the promises of God for the Bible says the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Isaiah 55 11, he said, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth and it's not going to return unto me void. God is looking for somebody to take him at his word. Is there anybody on here tonight that believes God? Is there anybody on here tonight that believes that God is not a man and he should not lie if he said it? He'll make it good if he spoke it. He going to bring it to pass. Is anybody on here that believe that you don't need everybody on your side? All you need is one person. All you need is one person that believes in your dream and God will do the supernatural. God will defeat the enemy. He will put the enemy to flight because my Bible says the enemy that come against you one way, they going to flee from you seven different ways. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that loves you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. No weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment it shall be condemned. My, 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 my. I'm excited, man. I'm excited about Jesus. I said I'm excited about Jesus. Glory to God. Let me get some water here. I'm excited, man. Glory to God. He's not dead. I said, he's not dead. You know, some people, they get offended on me. And so they get offended and say, man, why you got to yell and scream? Listen, have you ever seen a man on fire shut his mouth up? If you set a dumb man on fire, he'll talk. Hello, somebody. Hey, I'm on fire. John said he's going to baptize you. He that's coming after me is mightier than I. He is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Not with the Holy Ghost and ice water. With the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire. My God, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they were in one place and on one accord. And the Bible says there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, mighty rushing of wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And cloven tongues of fire appeared on all of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. God is not dead. He is alive. Praise God. So Jonathan, he said to his armor bearer, you can't tell everybody your plans. You better make sure you're telling your plans to somebody that believes God. Who is it that I'm talking to? <clears throat> I said, you better make sure you're sharing your plans with somebody that believes God. Are you hearing me, friends? So Jonathan said, let's go. It ain't no problem with God. To save with a whole army or just with a few of us. And as I'm a bearer, I love verse 7. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 14. We're in verse 7 right now. And as I'm a bearer said unto him, I love these words. Do all that's in your heart. Behold, I am with you according to your heart. My God, what a powerful, what a powerful connection. His armor bearer didn't even have a sword. In other words, his armor bearer was willing to risk his life to go with his mentor and do what thus said the Lord. Are you listening to me? Man, I, I, we, 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 you got to surround yourself with people that believe God. God, that when you say, man, this is what God put in my heart, that they would say, I believe it's God. Let's do it. Let, let's, let's, let's jump out the boat. Let's make it happen. 
My God. Listen, if some of you just joined us, invite some of your friends. Invite some of them on this broadcast. If you're on an Android device, slide up. Share the broadcast with your friends. If you're on an iPhone, swipe from the right to the left. Share this broadcast. Invite some of your friends to be a part of this. Because I believe they need to hear. They need to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying on tonight. Now watch this. So his alma bear said, Jonathan, I'm with you. Do everything that's in your heart. I wish you I got your back. We'll go down together. Watch this. Then said Jonathan. So Jonathan realized I got one person that believes God with me. That's all I need. I, I just need someone with faith. You know, sometimes we need a push. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you need a jump. I pray to God I'm that I'm a bearer for you tonight. Letting you know I believe God with you. If God put it in your heart, the Bible says, for with God all things are possible. You are Jonathan tonight. I'll be the armor bearer to say, it. I'm with you, man. If God said it, he's going to make the thing happen because nothing is impossible with the almighty King of Kings, Lord of Lords, line of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus. Nothing is impossible with him. Greater is he that's in you. My God, God's just waiting on you to take the step of faith. What's this? Then said Jonathan, behold, we will pass over under these men. We're going and we are going to reveal ourselves to the enemy. Yeah, I only got one sword. You have none. There's a whole bunch of them. It's just, it's just me and you. But I'm believing God. Who is it on this broadcast tonight? You, you may be watching me through YouTube or Facebook or through Catch or through LinkedIn or even Pinterest. But you believe God. Who is it that I'm talking to? Because I feel someone's faith is just coming alive here. I feel someone knows, Pastor Sean, this word is for me. You are talking to me, Pastor Sean. This only could be the Holy Ghost because you don't know me personally. This only could be God talking directly to me through you. Let me know that it's going to be all right, that I'm closer, that I'm closer to the breakthrough than I realize. Watch this. So Jonathan said, you know what? Let's let's go, let's go take the end, let's go into the enemy's camp. We, we, we don't need a crowd. It's just me and you and God, and that's enough. Let's go. Now watch this. So Jonathan said, let's test the water to see if, if God is for real with us. Because <laughs> you know, sometimes you feel like you're out there by yourself. Oh, of course, he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But come on, if the truth be told, there are times you feel like, man, where is God when I need him most? Come on here, somebody. Talk to me. Talk to me. Watch this. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Verse 9, Jonathan said, here's going to be the test that we are going to know if God is with us. Watch this. Jonathan said, if they say unto us. Now, this blows my mind because this only could be the Holy Ghost manifesting himself through, through, through Jonathan's word. This man had tapped into the heart of God. Are you hearing me? Because the armor bearer said, do what's in your heart. I'm with you. Now, wait a minute. The armor bearer didn't even know what was in Jonathan's heart, but he was convinced that the desires of their heart was about to come to pass. Who is it that I'm preaching to? I said, you are closer than you realize. You are closer than you realize. Now watch this. Jonathan said, we're going to show ourselves to them. If they say unto us, come up here unto us, then we will go up and that will be the sign that God has given us the victory. If they call me, the job is mine. If they call me, the contract is mine. If they call me, I'm going to get the promotion. Who is it that I'm preaching to? If they call me, the house is mine. If they call me, my God, my God, my son's coming out of prison. If they call, if they call, that's a sign that God has delivered them into our hands. Watch this. And Jonathan said, this will be the sign to us. Verse 11, and both of them, they reveal themselves under the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, behold, the Hebrews are coming 
from, from out of hiding. Oh my God, oh, the Christians are coming out of the closet. Ah, you ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing yet. I believe there's about to be a move of God this year that's going to shake America by the power of the Holy Spirit and droves of people are going to be saved this year because the Christians are coming out of the closet. Who is it that I'm preaching to? I ain't ashamed to be associated with Jesus. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Talk to me. Watch this. So the Philistines say, ah, they're coming out of hiding. We about to put something on them, ah, but they were wrong. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, come up to us. Oh, this only could have been the Holy Ghost. Wait, how, how could Jonathan even know that these men were going to say this? Jonathan said, he picked it up in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost revealed it to him. Jonathan said, if they say unto us, come up to us. Jonathan said, this is a sign from God that we got the victory. And sure enough, when they recognized Jonathan and his armor bearer, the Philistines were thinking, these guys have got to be nuts. It's two of them and all of us. We are certainly going to wipe them out and take their lives. And they said, come up to us and we are going to show you something. That's what the devil's been saying about you this week. I'm going to show him something. Ah, but that devil is about to get the shock out of his life because there's an invisible king of kings behind you that he don't recognize. God is on your side. Your situation's getting ready to turn around. The devil's going to be embarrassed. Those who are waiting on you to fall, they're going to be disgraced because you ain't going down. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, God says, Fair thou not, for I am with you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness and all those who were mad and angry against you shall be disappointed. Are you listening to me? Watch this. So Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, come up after me for the Lord has delivered them into our hands. My God, are you listening to this? God is delivering the victory into your hands right now. It has to happen in the spirit first before it's made manifest. But you got to open your mouth and declare it. God, I'm closer to my breakthrough than I realized. In fact, I'm taking my breakthrough right now in the Holy Ghost. I'm taking it on credit. I'm taking it by faith in the name of Jesus. I received a breakthrough. Now watch this. And the Bible says, and Jonathan climbed upon his hands and upon his feet and his armor bearer after him. Sometimes we got to get we got to get down on our knees and let God know we are trusting you. We are depending on you. Uh, we are not putting our confidence in our flesh. We are not putting our confidence in ourselves. We are getting on our knees. We are casting ourselves on the ground to let God know. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I forgive give their sins and I'll heal the whole land. Jonathan got on his knees and on his hands and they begin to climb. Oh, what a position to find yourself in. What a position to find yourself in. Praise God. And the Bible says, and his armor bearer came after him. And the Bible says, and they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer slew after him. Wait a minute. His armor bearer slew. Wait a minute. Only Jonathan had a sword. That first person they wiped out under the anointing. That they, took, they took a weapon that the enemy intended to use on them. And now Jonathan and his armor bearer, they both have swords. And the sword represent the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the living God. Who is it that I'm talking to? What the devil means for evil, God's about to cause them to fall into their own traps. The lions that they prepared for you, they're going to be fed to their own lions. The men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them into the fire. I refer to this. My God, those men died from the fire, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were thrown into the fire, didn't even have the scent of smoke on them. They were not touched by the fire. That's 
the God. We serve the same sword that Goliath came out to kill David with. David got promoted in the spiritual because David went from using a slingshot to a sword within a matter of moments. The sword that Goliath intended to kill David with, David used the very sword against Goliath. What a mighty God we serve. So the Bible says they fell before Jonathan and before his armor bearer. Watch this. And the Bible says that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, was about 20 men within, as it were, a half acre of land, which a yoke of oxen might blow. The Bible says God gave Jonathan and his armor bearer the victory. You don't need everybody on your side. They were closer to the breakthrough than they realized. Jonathan was hoping his dad would have rose up and make the thing happen. Little that he knew that the victory was in his hands. The victory was in his sword. The victory was with the, the simple armor bearer that was with him. When God is on your side, you don't need a whole lot of people to be with you. Are you hearing me, friends? I said, when God is on your side, you don't need a whole lot of people to be for you. And God want me to tell you tonight, you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. Your situation that has you stress out beyond measure, it's about to take a turn for the better. Are you listening to me, friends? Be encouraged on tonight. You are closer. I said you are closer to the breakthrough than you realize. All you need is the Lord on your side. My mom would have said, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory shall be mine. And victory is yours right now in the name of Jesus. God, I bless. Listen, before I pray with you, remember, I'm going to be on here Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, declaring the word of God. Invite your family, invite your friends. Tell them about the broadcast. Tell them, hey, Pastor Sean's on Periscope. The Holy Ghost is moving. The Word of God is coming forth. We are being taught. We are being encouraged. We are being strengthened. Our faith is growing. Are you hearing me? And listen, friend, if this ministry is a blessing to your life, send your tithes to your local church. But if this ministry is a blessing to your life, I want you to sow a seed into this ministry, not your tithe. Your tithe belongs to the ministry of your pastor, and as local church, respect that covering, respect that authority that's in your life, and God will bless you. But you who are being touched through this ministry, you feel like God's call us to be in your life, to speak the word of God, visit our website, seanpinder.net, give a donation to the ministry. God will bless you. Are you hearing me? We are, we are an extension of the kingdom of God. We are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are lifting up the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Put your trust in Jesus, but just be obedient. Just be obedient to your local pastor. Be obedient. Are you hearing me? And if that church isn't where you're supposed to be, find a church where the Holy Ghost is moving and the word of God is being preached with the power of God. Amen. And people are not speaking out against signs, wonders, and miracles. Find yourself among a group of people that believe God. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Praise God. But listen, we, we love you guys. We care about you. And I pray that God would bless you beyond measure. I pray that doors would open for you this week. I pray that God would give you creative ideas. I pray that your debts would be supernaturally canceled like God did for Dexter. I bless the work of your hands. I pray that God would increase you. I pray that you would be strengthened in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you will not be ashamed of the cross of Christ. Are you hearing me? I pray that you will not be ashamed to be a Christian. I pray that you would be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Are you hearing me? We love you guys. I pray the blessings of God on you. I pray that your week would be well. I pray that your week would be a successful week. I pray that your week would be a supernatural week. I pray that God would increase you more and more. Ah, that devil is a loser. I said that devil is a loser. Sorry about that. We got kicked out just for a few minutes. You know, Periscope, they're still working on this thing. <laughs> but listen, I want to finish pray for you. I want to finish, declare God's word over your life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would be blessed this week, 
that the favor of God would descend on you. I pray that God would open doors for you. I pray that God would give you supernatural breakthroughs. I pray that signs, wonders, and miracles would follow you everywhere you go this week. I cancel accidents. I cancel heart attacks. I cancel diseases. I cancel every attack of the enemy on your life, every surprise attack that the enemy would try to bring on your life, I cancel it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless your life. I bless your marriage. I bless your children. I cover you from head to toe in the blood of Jesus. I pray God's divine protection over your life. Go forward and know that God is with you you in the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. We love you guys. And look, I'm going to be back on here tomorrow. I don't know what time. I'll just jump on here and share the word of God. Whenever I feel that release, I'll do it. But we love you guys. We thank all of you for being a part of this broadcast. I'll see you again tomorrow. And remember, we're going to be on here 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Thursday night. Remember to join us. Invite your friends to be a part. Love you guys. God bless all of you. Take care. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.